The Xenoblade games have been pretty popular lately, with the highly successful Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch, its lengthy expansion Torn of the Golden Country, and of course most recently the HD remaster of Xenoblade Chronicles 1. But the series has in fact been around a lot longer than these games, starting all the way back in 1998 with the release of Xenogears on the PlayStation 1 and then the Xenosaga trilogy on the PS2. Each of the seven main Xeno games are all amazing in their own way, and for me this is easily one of my favourite RPG series of all time. This video will act as a countdown looking at how I personally rank all of the games in the series. If you liked this video, it would help out a lot if you hit like and sub for way more RPG content. Also, check out my other videos on the Xena series such as Know the Facts where we look at the things you didn't know about these great games. I'm also interested to see how you rank the titles that you've played, so let me know in the comments. Alright, let's get into it. At number 7, we have the Black Sheep of the Saga series, Xenosaga Episode 2. The original plan was to have Xenosaga span 6 titles, but this was eventually cut down to just 3. To me, Episode 2 of the epic Xenosaga series was a mile behind the quality of every other Xena game. It was great to see how the quality story progressed, and playing as all of our favourite characters once again was fun, but I felt that there were far too many uninteresting scenes that really got in the way of having a good time. Not only this, but the visual style had a complete overhaul with some of the new, more realistic models looking both ugly and void of all life. Then there's the new hit and miss voice acting in soundtrack style, and of course the overly complex battle system. This combat had some good ideas, but made the most simple of battles take way more time to complete than they should have. Even with its flaws, the fact that this title is set smack in the middle of an awesome trilogy makes it a must play. I just find it incredibly strange that this was the only Xenosaga game released in PAL countries. I mean, it's by far the worst and you can't exactly just pick it up and know what's going on. We've now reached number 6 and already we're into the A grade quality of games. Xenoblade Chronicles X was released after Chronicles 1 and takes a completely different direction to what we would expect. The premise here is awesome. The human race gets caught in the middle of an intergalactic war between two alien races. To give themselves the best chance of survival they send out multiple arcs loaded with humans to hopefully settle on a new peaceful planet. Two years into this journey, one such arc is attacked and crash lands on Mira, a massive land with beautiful beautiful landscapes and diverse creatures. Honestly, how amazing does this look? The exploration here is the best part of the game. It is highly detailed, diverse, absolutely massive and full of things to discover. It really is the perfect open world. Every single thing that you see in the distance you can reach either by foot or in your mech which are called scales. Taking on giant beasts that fill the world with a pretty decent combat system was a lot of fun. As far as the story goes, it is the weakest in the series and this is mainly due to the emphasis on exploration and the blank slate speechless main character that you create. This is the reason that this game didn't rank as high as the other games in the series. Still, Xenoblade Chronicles X is the best Wii U exclusive and I'm waiting for the day that we see it ported to the Switch. Next we have Xenosaga Episode 1 which was the first episode in this epic Xenosaga trilogy. Xenosaga's focus is its story and it is delivered very well through many hours of quality voice acted cutscenes. In fact, at times it feels more like an interactive movie but I am fine with that since the story is the best part of the game and the trilogy. The characters are also brilliant and very memorable, most notably Cosmos who soon became a very iconic heroine. As you can see, the visual style here is completely different to the the second game in the series and I really did like this anime style. The turn based gameplay also establishes some great ideas that are seen throughout the series and this creates some great battles. I also have to mention that Yasunori Matsuda is the genius behind this epic soundtrack. If you know who he is, nuff said. This game was the start of something special. Unfortunately it doesn't look like we will be getting a remaster anytime soon because apparently it's not financially viable. As a result many people will miss out on this series which is a huge shame. In number 4, we have the final Xenosaga game. Talk about a bounce back. Episode 3 both improves on everything I loved about the previous two games and fixes a lot of the glaring issues that plagued this second title. 
The graphical enhancements this time around look amazing and it would have been great if the entire series had this visual style. The gameplay is also a lot different and the brand new simpler turn based system worked well for both the regular and the mech combat. Everything that the first two titles built up to was finally resolved. There were some absolutely amazing story moments here and once I got my head around it I had nothing but praise for the way that this series concluded. This was the best in the trilogy and the perfect finish to the Xenosaga series. Now, for number 3 on our list, I'm going to group Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and its lengthy expansion Torn of the Golden Country together. This game ticks absolutely every box that I would want from a JRPG. An excellent cast of characters, a complex, well-written story full of incredible action sequences and loads of intrigue, an awesome soundtrack, deep rewarding gameplay, loads to do, and of course, the best thing about all Xenoblade games, the world-class exploration. I swear, Xenoblade is in a league of its own when it comes to this. The blade system was one of the standout features for me and trying to collect them all was great even if certain blades <coughs> cosmos, <coughs> were next to impossible to obtain due to the harsh RNG mechanics. The Torna expansion was set many years before the main title and answered a lot of the questions I had regarding some of the characters from the first. This was a great way to expand this already epic world. Honestly, the fact that a game as incredible as Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is only number 3 speaks volumes about the quality of this series. Four years after the Xenosaga series concluded, developers Monolith Soft released the next Xeno title on the Wii, Xenoblade Chronicles. Like the Xenosaga series, this one was also written by Tetsuya Takahashi and we know that everything that he touches turns to gold. Now, I had a fair bit of trouble deciding which of the two main Xenoblade Chronicles games should be ranked higher. Basically, everything good that I just said about Chronicles 2 can be repeated here, especially the story and the characters which are incredible. Good thing too, considering how long this game is. The setting is something that is also awesome here. I mean, how many games have you played that takes place on giant gods? Chronicles 1 has also been acting as a benchmark for me for the last decade in terms of exploration. The environments are beautiful and absolutely massive and the best part is that there is so much to do and find throughout these lands. No game since has reached this mark. The only real disappointment that I had when this game was released was its platform. The Wii was the only console of the generation that wasn't HD and I couldn't help but feel that the already incredible visuals would have looked even more gorgeous on the PS3. This year however, the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was released on the Switch and this not only has graphical improvements but also extra story content. This is the best way to play the game so if you haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles yet then this should be your next RPG. RPG. Yeah, you probably expected this for number one, Xenogears. Whenever I hear this name, it just fills me with excitement. Words cannot describe how incredible this game is, and it is easily one of my favourite RPGs of all time, and if you've played the game, you'll know why. The characters and the story are in a league of its own. This game has the best story and the most complex, interesting, memorable cast of characters that I have ever seen in a video game. Yes, it's that good, and there were countless times in the plot that I was just lost for words trying to comprehend what I just witnessed. While the story itself is perfect and the benchmark for JRPG narratives, its delivery was far from perfect. Due to production constraints, the second disc was clearly rushed and didn't deliver the story as flawlessly as it should have. But this is easily forgiven considering how amazing the entire experience is. A special mention also needs to go to the soundtrack too, in particular the theme song Small Two of Pieces which will play in a tick. In summary, Xenogears is amazing, please give us a remake. Just imagine if this game received the treatment that the FF7 remake got. Close by your side. Like
And there we have it, the Xena series ranked. Making this video brought back such amazing memories and definitely cemented the Xena series as one of my favourite RPG series of all time. Perhaps only second to Sukhiran and Final Fantasy. I want to know what you guys think. Out of all the Xena games that you've played, how would you rank them? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you like this, hit like and sub for loads more RPG content. See you next time. But just you and I can find